So I had a little bit of a scare this last couple of weeks. Uh, a giant parcel containing all of our dice nearly was lost by the Royal Mail. It went to the Isle of Man instead of Edinburgh. Uh, let me tell you, it caused quite a few sleepless nights, but all is well. And I'm going to tell you the whole story and how it's impacted me and my customers and the way that we will work going forwards with our tale of the missing £10,000 parcel by the Royal Mail. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to another Precious Metal Ramble. So we've got a little bit of a story to tell you today. We nearly lost £10,000 worth of retail poured silver because of the Royal Mail, or the Royal Fail as sometimes I like to call them. Um, yeah, they sent a £10,000 parcel to the wrong place and then couldn't find it for a good long time. Fortunately, it did turn up. It had been put in a bag that people put things in when they don't know what to do with them and it staggers belief. But it did finally arrive. However, it has had follow-on consequences because it did contain all of the dice that we were working on for all of you who pre-ordered. And a huge thank you to all of you for your patience, your kind words of support, and even some of you out there, when I contacted you to say that there were huge delays on this, paying me the balance of your deposit. You know, it's, it's incredible to have these kind of customers out there, and I am very lucky for that. But um, goodness me, it was bloody stressful watching the tracking not progress and not knowing what was happening and I was having all of these contingency plans uh, being put through my mind and I even got an email drafted together to talk about what would happen if it was lost and I want to share that experience and my commitment here uh, on YouTube publicly to say that in the worst case if this happened again and it was truly lost not a single penny would be put out of pocket for any of my customers. And that's the way that I want to do business. Not having things delayed by weeks and months because of other people's failings. So, yeah, we'll talk about that as we go. But we've also got a whole batch of other bits of poured silver, which we worked on earlier in the year, which are up for sale. So these are now on our website. You can go and check those out. There's a link down in the description below. For the very best prices, please drop me an email. We can give you a little bit of a discount for banks transfer payments. So, Royal Mail, Royal Fail. So, for those of you who perhaps don't know, these solid silver dice that I make um, were exceptionally popular, as suspected. And in, I think it was late October, we put a little pre-order uh, listing on our website, which went manic, which went crazy. And people bought. Um, I was very grateful for all of that support and people putting these orders in. I think it's testament to the fact that we've created something that is super cool, super good, and super special. Um, and so I got to work very, very hard work on these. These dice take a long time to make and sand down and get to the perfect cube or as perfect as we can make them and then we send them off to the Edinburgh Assay office for hallmarks like on this heart that's come back. These marks here go on the dice. So I had all of this planned. I had you know my schedule put in place based on what I understand and know from the um, you know the turnaround times from the Assay office and everything and thought yeah this is great. It's going to be busy and I'm going to be busy in the run up to Christmas but I think I can do this. I know I can do this. So when of course I sent my parcel off at sort of mid to late October and then checked the tracking and saw that it hadn't gone anywhere, I was of course a little bit like, oh, what's going on? Now this was all at the time of the Royal Mail strike. However, of course, there are plenty of opportunities in between strike days for the Royal Mail to catch up. And in fact, a lot of the other special delivery items, and I sent it through special delivery, which is as the clue might suggest, meant to be a special next day secured service. I was kind of expecting it just to arrive a bit later. Fine, okay, it's a bit delayed because of the strikes. And it didn't. Uh, so I waited another day or so and then thought, well, no, it's still not updating anything. I really do need to maybe start asking some questions about where my parcel is, considering it's got £10,000 worth of retail values worth of silver in there. Um, bear in mind that, of course, you know, we charge a premium for our pieces, so it wasn't £10,000 worth of kind of raw material silver, but still, that's a lot of money to potentially have to look to refund customers if something went missing 
altogether. So, rightly so, I was a little bit concerned, got on the phone to Royal Mail, who were pretty next to useless, to be quite frank. Um, you have to kind of go through the um, escalations process. So here's my top tip for anybody who is trying to find out more about items which have come completely missing or AWOL within the Royal Mail network. Um, when you get through to the customer service representative on the other end, they pretty much can't help you in most cases like this. So you have to just ask for escalation to the investigations team. Um, if they say no, you just press your case and just say no, I won't take no for an answer. And they eventually will say, okay, we'll put you through. Um, but they don't put you through, they just put a little mark on there for someone to give you a call back within, um, within I think it's four hours there, SLA. So um, that's what happened. I got a call back and I was told that it had gone to the wrong mail center, which is fantastic, great. Okay, how does that happen for special delivery? I don't really know. Anyway, so they then said, it's fine, it'll work its way through the system and it'll be there. So I was like, well, okay, if they, if they know where it is, that's great. Sounds good, let's just wait and see. Of course, nothing happened to the tracking. So rightly so, again, I was a little bit PO'd and started to try to get back in touch with them. Couldn't really get hold of anybody again because the customer service line is basically useless. So escalated it again, didn't get a call back until a few days later and then was told it had gone to the Isle of Man which is ridiculous. So um, for those that don't know, the Isle of Man's Royal Mail is actually a different organisation entirely. It's a different private company. Uh, it just contracts with the Royal Mail to do the mail in the Isle of Man. It uses similar networks, but it is a separate entity altogether. Um, and that was very concerning. And so when escalated again, um, it was a case of, we don't really know what's going on. Hopefully it should, again, progress through the system. Um, but it didn't again. So again, I had to make a fuss and song and dance about it to really get something going on. And to their credit, the Escalations team um, were very good in the end. They actually were contacting the uh, Isle of Man postal office and trying to find where it had been. And eventually it did start moving through the system, but it took about 12 or 13 days in total to get to where it needed to be, um, which is just bonkers and I know we're in this world of strikes and difficult times right now but you know the the um, validity of whether strikes should happen is a debate for another time and not really something I want to get into on this channel but from a customer perspective it really is annoying when you get this kind of situation happening um, strikes aside like I get that there are issues and delays within the network but making mistakes like sending something to the completely wrong delivery office that's not a fault of the strikes that's a fault of incompetence in either a system that has re misread the label or as a person maybe did a double check on the label and as I was told it seemed like somebody had mistaken the letters E H for Edinburgh for I M and one would question the um, you know suitability of somebody or a system that reads such a mistake on a label to actually have a job in reading labels. So that's a bit of feedback from my perspective to the Royal Mail. So look, you know, I can sit here and tell the story about it and say that it's it's frustrating, it's annoying, it's really um, worrying as a customer to not know where such a valuable parcel is. Um, there is an insurance value attached to special delivery, and that would have helped but by no means would have covered all of the potential refunds because contrary to what a lot of people think, that insurance value does not cover things like retail value of items. It only covers the cost to replace items. And of course, with a lot of the silver that we make and certainly the dice that were in that parcel, uh, the amount of labor, time, energy, effort that went into making them far outstrips you know, my concern in terms of the material value. You know, if we lose a parcel and I lose a few thousand pounds in material value, the world's not going to end. It's it's just money. And I know nobody likes to lose money, but I can bear that loss and I can so almost self-insure in that sense. And uh, if I do have to refund all my customers, then so be it. But what I don't like is when you put hard energy, effort, time, blood, sweat and tears into making something and then through no fault of your own, all of that work is undone and it, it's just really insulting, it really is. And, um, you know, it, whilst the people in the investigations team were really good and helped, I just think it shouldn't have happened in the first place and it's an indicative of a system which is is starting to really strain and not, and not be fit for service sometimes, which is a real shame. And when you consider that over the course of the last 
well, I've been in business now six and a half, seven years. Um, I've probably, I, last time I checked, which was about a year ago, I'd put about £30,000 worth through the Royal Mail system in terms of postage. So that's how much I've spent with the Royal Mail posting things. Um, so, you know, you add another year's worth on that, I've probably spent close to £40,000 with the Royal Mail and to to really be let down like that is quite sad. So, yeah, sorry guys, it's a bit of a BYB ramble about the world, but you know what, sometimes you need to make a song and dance of things to that the Royal Mail understands or an, an, an institution understands that what they're doing is not good enough. And, um, you know, from my perspective, as I said, like I've, so all my Dice customers, you'll have had an email uh, probably just over a week ago explaining the delays. I even drafted an email that was going to talk about if it was completely lost or stolen and I would have to either remake everything or refund people. And I, I drafted this long email and it was quite stressful. It was quite annoying to have to even go through that process. But I wanted to be prepared in case I got the bad news that they were not going to be able to find the parcel. I thought that was a really important thing to do. Um, and I do want to make a public commitment here to say, and I've done it before, I've said it before, and I've done this before in, in actual practice too, but if there ever is a situation where an item is lost and customers are facing you know, postage claims and things, uh, from my perspective, I mean, the legal thing to do most of the time is to refund the customer, but a lot of people don't, and a lot of organisations don't. And I will publicly commit 100% right now to say not a single person will be left out of pocket in the event of anything ever going missing in a post. So, you know, from that perspective, I do think, you know, I've learned a lot from this situation, and I hope the Royal Mail's learned a lot from this situation, but it is frustrating from my point of view as a creator. Um, you know, I'm now facing the prospects. So these are with the Edinburgh office now. Um, and they will be worked on over the coming week, I would think, and I would get them back at some point. But of course, there are more Royal Mail strikes happening at the moment, and the network is again under stress and pressure. So whether I'll get them back in this forthcoming week, I'm not entirely convinced I will. And even if I did, there's still 50, five zero worth of hours left to do on these dice. You'll see the, the difference here on these two. This one has uh, on the right, if I, I know the light's awful today, guys, I'm sorry, the sun's really low in the sky, shining through the window. But this one's uh, a little bit more rough and ready, as you can see. This one's a lot more smooth. We've got to smooth every single side of the dice down and get them finished up and then presented and packaged and sent. And there's probably at least 50 hours worth of work left to do on that. Of course, if I don't get it until the back end of next week, processing everybody's orders in that short time before Christmas is going to be impossible. And of course, our international customers definitely won't have them before Christmas, uh, which is frustrating. So it's really annoying to be let down by someone else. And for that, I can only apologize. It's not how I personally like to do business. It's not how I want my customers to feel. And I was trying to explain this to the Royal Mail um, you know, as we were going through this whole process of how how their failures impact other people, not just me as a business. Um, you know, I've got great customers, I really do. Like, you guys out there are so good. I can't thank you all enough for your patience, for your kind um, words. I even had one set of customers who paid the balance on their deposit when I told them that there was going to be a delay. I mean, you can't ask for better customers sometimes, but... At the same time, I can understand that there are some of you out there who've pre-ordered these dice, which will be, quite frankly, pissed off. And I know I would be a little bit annoyed if I'd pre-ordered something and two months later it still hadn't arrived. Um, so from that perspective, I can only apologise for the failings of others. It's not, as I said, how I like to do business. Um, you know, it was an interesting, interesting point for me. I've learned something from this as well. You know, we've got this pre-order process that we do for these dice. I don't generally like to do pre-orders because of issues that might come up like this, but because of the time of year that we were in, I decided to go ahead and do that anyway. Um, so we will still do the odd bit of pre-ordering down the line, but I think generally going forward, I'm gonna avoid doing such huge batches like this. It, it, is, it is stressful. It is not necessarily the best outcome for all and sundry to really go through when it's delayed and um, you know from my perspective now um, I would have hoped by the end of this forthcoming week to be able to kind of down tools for Christmas and spend some time with the family and just to have a bit of a break to be quite frank but you know I've got work to do and I will be doing that work as best as I can um, that said there will be a break over Christmas and I will be taking some time off so uh, for those of you who have pre-ordered dice and 
you know, you've had the email update from me, um, there's a good chance that some of them might not be ready till January. And I think that's, you know, breaks are important. And whilst I want to, you know, support and get all these orders out as best as I can, uh, if it's not a priority for you to have it in between Christmas and New Year, then uh, let me know because I can prioritize other orders. Um, I know a lot of you have said in your replies that you're not too bothered. Look, look I'm rambling now. It's what we 15 minutes of rambling. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, if anybody is still watching by this point, um, yeah, thank you. Um, I do appreciate that. You're in the extra special, super cool kids club, the Ramblers. And um, it's without the support of people like you that we don't do these things lightly. So thank you. And uh, thank you to anybody who's pre-ordered Dyson and is being patient too. All right, that's it from me. I uh, am done with the rambles. We'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.